This video is brought to you by AKSIAS. Comfortable? Yes, sir. You stay in Hyderabad? Yes, sir. I stay in Elbinagar. Elbinagar. Yes, so, you are from IIT, right? Yes, sir. Engineering. Some mechanical engineering. Mechanical. <coughs> this, have you mentioned mechanical engineering? Yes, sir. Engineering. I could not mention mechanical. Ah, that's why I was wondering which, which yes, branch. Yes, sir, that was a mistake. Sir. Mechanical engineering passed out in twenty twenty. Right, sir. Your father is a banker. Right, sir. Mother. She works house house. She is house house worker. House house worker. What do you mean by house worker? House, house worker in the sense she works in the house. Is there any other term for that? <coughs> Previously we used to call housewives. Now we call them as homemakers. homemakers yes. yes sir, I was unable to Yeah, homemaker is a dignified no, term yes. we have to use for yes. women who are doing domestic work. Do you think domestic work is a work? It is definitely. Hmm. So because, uh, let's say, uh, there is no domestic work uh, in the in, in the economy, so then men have to do the domestic work. So in this way, women are uh, um, impacting the economy, uh, in the world, in the macro economy. So uh, by reducing the wear and tear of the men, so this way, women are contributing to the economy. So therefore, we have to call, uh, say that they have. Uh, they, they are eligible workers in the economy. You are saying that contributing. Right, sir. When you say contributing, it becomes a secondary aspect of. Secondary aspect? Yes. When you say contributing to economy, contributing to wear and tear of the man. Right, sir. You said it clearly. Right, sir. Then they will become secondary players in the entire game. They are helpful. Not the primary ones. Do you think this understanding is correct in terms of modern understanding about women and gender question? Right, sir, sir uh, even though they don't directly uh, contribute to the economy through the monetary value, uh, saying that secondary work uh, is kind of limiting to what they do, sir. Uh, because wear and tear uh, is usually included in, even in the GDP values. Uh, when we talk about machines, we say uh, depreciation is added within the GDP uh, GDP calculation. Therefore, uh, wear and tear I will not consider it a secondary factor. It is a primary factor. In my Did we have this wear and tear factor in men? Do we talk about men and wear and tear? Sir, I am unable to understand the question. Sir. No, you you talked about wear and tear. Yes. Sir. You talked about they contribute. Right, they help, right, they support, right, they, all these words suggest that they are secondary. Sir, I wouldn't call them secondary, sir. You are not calling, but you are, you, your words, every word has, see, for example, I am saying that I will give you the right to talk. Right, Do you think it's a correct word? I will allow you to talk. I will give you right to talk. Do you think it's a correct word? Right is... I do not find anything wrong in it. Sir. Right is in you. I yes. can't give you the right. Right, sir. Constitution provides us the right. Do you, do you, did you understand what I said? Right, sir. Yes. You, uh, it's inherent. Not, it's rights not are inherent. Somebody, uh, it's not that somebody yeah. has to give rights. To no. Why, why I talked about it is actually when you talked about your mother, you said home worker. Sir, I was unable to. I, I know the term homemaker, sir, but I was unable to. Ah, from, from here, what happened? You just slipped into the explanation where all the words you used, you conceptually, I think you are not lessening your mother's role. But your answer is somewhat non compatible with the modern understanding of woman. Okay, 
We'll talk about it. I'll explain why in the latter stage. Okay? Because this is a mock interview where I have to find out the loopholes where in expression and sometimes where we slip into some which you may not intend to say, but still you have that in the interview. Anyway. So your native place is Mahub Nagar, your old Mahub Nagar, that is Nagar Karnal. Right, sir. Do you have any forest area in Nagar Karnal? Right, sir. Uh, Nalamala Forest. Sir. Tell something about Nalamala Forest. Sir, Nalamala Forest uh, spans across Telangana and uh, Andhra Pradesh, sir. Uh, we even have uh, uh, the Krishna River passes through uh, Nalamala Forest, on which uh, the Nagarjuna Sagar and Sri Salam Dams have been built, sir. And uh, if, if you go into current affairs, recently uh, a uranium mine has been an uh, issue in, in the Nagar Karnula district, sir. The tribals have opposed to it, and uh, the assembly has passed a bill uh, uh, stopping a center uh, into further uranium plants. What is your take on this issue? Sir, even though uranium is uh, uh, important uh, to our development, sir, I think the tribal issues are more important and uh, the rehabilitation that they have to uh, take place in, within the tribal areas is hazardous and uh, it's not been a good experience in the other parts of India, sir. Keeping this in mind and also that uh, uranium can have radioactive waste, sir. Because of, because of the environmental concerns as well and also the tribal rehabilitation concerns. I think uh, what State Assembly has done is in the right direction. Sir. But NMDC is still exploring. Within the development of I am not aware of it sir. But not in Telangana region but shifted its operation to other part that is Andhra Pradesh borders, Prakashma and all those things. Okay, right. So even uh, even if they are shifted, I think uh, what Telangana government has done is in the right direction, sir. Then we will have the same problem everywhere. Uranium mining should be stopped forever. Right, sir. Uh, even now, uh, uranium has been uh, imported from Australia or uh, Kazakhstan, these areas. Sir. Since we have good relations with them uh, now, I don't think it will be a short term problem for now in the long term perspective we can think about it later sir but for now i don't think uh, we actually need uh, uranium uh, so but uh, no, no, it is a question you are saying that we are importing right, sir. the same problem will be there in australia or anywhere else pollution disastrous and everything right, it's radioactive yes. so the whole world will have the same problem when we talk about uranium yes sir Sir, also uh, we have to understand the role of technology in this. Sir. If we consider deep uh, deep mining, the radioactive waste will not be a concern, but uh, tribal habitation, tribal rehabilitation will be a concern. So let's say if we are uh, for Australia, most of the places are not habitable. Sir. Yeah. It's not habitable. So their deep deep mining will not be a major concern. If the uh, better technology is used, I don't think environment concern is an issue. Sir. Right. But in Australia, for coal mines, there was a serious opposition. Have you heard about the opposition recently? Sir, I'm not aware. Any, any, any company, any Indian multinational was opposed by the Australians, Australian people. They protested. They came out onto streets, poured onto streets, opposing Indian company. Those who acquired some blocks. Adanis. Adan is for trying to acquire some gold, uh, this one, uh, these gold. coal mines and people opposed it, Gold Coast region. They opposed, they came onto streets protesting, Adan is take over. Since you talked about Australia, I just supplemented with this. Okay. So, Nalamala region is the place where you, your, your forefathers or your people started like you trekked in Kedarnath. It's, it's not the Kedarnath, sir. It's, it's Kedar Kanta. Ke oh, sorry, Kedar Kanta. Where is it? Sir, it's to the north of Dharan, sir. And uh, west of uh, Kedarnath, actually. They are actually interconnected. They, they have a meteorological connection. In uh, 
Shiva, Lord Shiva, he was uh, running away from the Pandavas, or rather moving away from Pandavas since he was angry on them for the violence in Kurukshetra. Initially, uh, the legend says that initially he stayed in Kedar Kanta. There is a Judaka Kala, uh, there is a small lake over there. And he was uh, staying there and the locals uh, disturbed his peace. So he had to move to Kedar Nath. Uh, that's what the locals of Kedar Kanta believe. So How far is Kedar Kanta from Kedar? It's nearly 62 km, 62 65 km. You, you trek this area? Yes sir. Is it the only trekking camp in Himalayas? No sir, there are lot. No, no, yours. You, you only one camp or you, you generally trekked in Kedar Kanta? Kedar Kanta is only one hill sir. No, no, you, you, is it only one instance? Yes, sir. Exactly. Or, or uh, you do it frequently? You did it frequently? No, sir. That is only once problem. you trekked? Yes, sir. Yeah, that is what I was asking. So, only once. Right, sir. What region is this Kedar Kanta? It's in the Uttarakhand, sir. Region? No, Northern Uttarakhand. Uh, I'm not uh, sure, sir, but uh, I think it's Kuma region. Is it Kuma or Gadhal? I'm not sure of it, sir. Kedar Nath is in Gadhal region. Dehradun? Is it Gadwal or Kumau? No, I don't know, sir. Dehradun is Gadwal. Gangotri is Gadwal. Yamnotri is Gadwal. Kedarna is Gadwal. Badrina is Gadwal. Almoda is Kumau region. Jageshwar is another place, peak, one of the peak from where you can see complete semicircular Himalayan region. That is Jageshwari in Almoda. But this is Gadwal. Right. Okay. Yes. You might have crossed with Tehri Dam. So While going to this trek. Have you heard about Tehri Dam? Tehri or Tehri? I have heard of it, sir. Uh, but mm -hmm. I am not uh, aware of Okay. Any. Okay. Fine. So, you are from mechanical engineering background. Right. Uh, so, why you have not opted for Continuation into technocracy. Yeah, from IIT Madras, people, the government and the institutions spent a lot of money on technocrats, and you want to come into administration. <coughs> Are we not losing technocrats like this? I actually worked for six months in a software company, sir. Opposed that, I realized that I'd have a better opportunity serving the civil in civil services. Sir. I mean, civil service is a wonderful opportunity uh, if you want to directly uh, serve the people. So that's what I, mean. I don't. Uh, I don't mean that uh, I was unhappy at my previous job, sir. I was happy at it, but I think I can serve better to directly to the people through civil services. So Did you know about civil services when you joined in intermediate or degree? Sir, I knew it uh, since I was a child. Uh, it was uh, because of my father I knew it. Uh, but I was hesitant because uh, UPS is a grueling task and uh, clearing it is a grueling task. So I was actually hesitant and uh, I was not willing to take the risk. And uh, recently my younger brother also got a job. So financially we are stable now and I think uh, I took a leap of faith and I took the risk. So. Uh, no, no, my question was not just at the level of taking risk. Right. If you knew about civil services before, do you think getting a, getting into IIT is a simple job? No sir, uh, IIT, getting into IIT is not a simple job. Then you have got into the IIT from intermediate and you are not ready to join, uh, take a uh, risk in uh, uh, taking some other science, social sciences as optionals and for, for, uh, trying for civil services. Right sir. Sir, because I was in a comfort zone uh, within the job, I was not willing to take the risk. But uh, after after uh, knowing that my financial condition is good, and uh, I have actually researched about the exam, and I thought that I came to know that uh, I can uh, achieve it. So that's how I took the. Is this your first attempt? What is your attempt? Number of. It is my first attempt. First attempt. Right, Prelims and mains. Right. Sir. So in the first attempt itself, you you are going to interview. Yes, sir. Very good. Then. Now you just reassess yourself. Why you why should you, why you could not have taken a risk before itself by taking some social senses? 
What is your options? Anthropology. It's not mechanical engineering, no, not engineering. No, you could have studied anthropology, BA or something and tried this. Why engineering? This is what I ask all the ATMs. Sir, uh, to be very frank, uh, I went into engineering because uh, uh, because of peer pressure. It was not. Uh, I was not even aware that there is a subject called anthropology <laughs> when I was in tenth standard. Mm. So, because uh, every good student goes into either mechanic, either uh, engineering or medical. Yes, so I was uh, actually uh, two peer uh, because peer pressure. I went into uh, engineering. Sir. And because also because I was good at mathematics, so I had to, uh, I, I chose uh, MPC sir to went uh, to IIT. Sir. How confident about anthropology? Decently confident, sir. Which subject, which topic in anthropology interests you? So, uh, physical and uh, social culture and anthropology. Sir. To be very specific, it would be social culture and anthropology. Physical anthropology. Can you tell some of the unique specimens which is Indian in terms of physical anthropology? Specimens I am speaking about. Specimens in the sense fossils. Yeah. Sir, so in the Shivalik's region, we found the Sivapithikas, Sivapithikas and Ramapithikas. Mm. And uh, in the Narmada region, we found the uh, Narmada man. These are the only fossils found in India. Apart from Narmada man, what is it? Any other region name? Homo erectus narmadensis. Hathnoraska. Hmm. Hathnoraya is a part of Narmada. Narmada. Hathnoraska, we call it as Hathnoraska lots. What about dinosaurs? Do you think dinosaurs are there in India? Sir, I am not aware of any fossil evidence, sir. But uh, they could have been in uh, India. Take a guess where it could have been. In India, which part? Sir, given the fact that uh, um, I'm not uh, sure if India was uh, separated from the Gondwana land uh, when, uh, when they got uh, extinct, sir. Uh, as you are taking a guess, I would say it's a. Uh, uh, Near the Eastern Ghats or something like that, so where Australia was connected to India. You have taken a guess, but direction is wrong. Okay. Take the Gondwana and connect it with Africa and take this curve. Part of Gujarat to Dakkan. Western region. Western to Dakkan also. Do you know that there is a Dinosaur skeleton in Hyderabad. No. You know about Hathnola skull, you know about Shiva Pithikas, Rama Pithikas, because those were part of your academics, your, your syllabus preparation. Problem is, we don't know many things about our area. There is, Telangana is part of the Jurassic period. We have dinosaurs in this area. And in Hyderabad, you have a dinosaur. Its name is Cotasaurus emanpalensis. Have you heard about Birla Planetarium? Birla Temple? Birla Temple, Birla Planetarium? Same, same complex, same hillock. Birla Planetarium is there, Science Center is there. There is Birla Dinosaurium is there. There you can see the fossil of the dinosaur found in Manchuria district of Telangana. Okay. As this is part of your anthropology and all the fossil studies, paleontology. Can you name any famous paleontologist? Paleobotanist or paleozoologist, anyone? Sir, I am not aware of India or the India. Have you heard about Birbal Sani? Yes, but I'm not. Uh, is there, is there just a flash in the mind, sir? But I don't know anything. Birbal Sani Institute in Lucknow. Paleontology, paleobotany. Okay. So, 
एनीवे कमिंग बैक टू एंथ्रोपोलॉजी यू सेट सोशल एंड कल्चरल एंथ्रोपोलॉजी व्हाट डू यू मीन बाय दैट सोशल कल्चरल एंथ्रोपोलॉजी ट्राइज टू स्टडी द सोशल एंड कल्चरल एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ अ मैन कल्चरल एस्पेक्ट्स कैन इंक्लूड एनीथिंग दैट अ मैन डज व्हिच इज नॉट व्हिच हैज नॉट कम टू हिम बाय बर्थ फॉर इंस्टेंस इट कैन बी फूड इट कैन बी लैंग्वेज इट कैन बी रिलीजन ऑल दिस एस्पेक्ट्स व्हिच आर नॉट इनहेरेंट बाय बर्थ दे आर अबाउट कल्चरल एस्पेक्ट्स सो एंड स्टडीइंग दिस इज इज अ पार्ट ऑफ सोशल कल्चरल एंथ्रोपोलॉजी can you elaborate some of the aspects for example food right so uh, anthropology tries to study cross cultural comparisons across space and time for instance uh, it tries to study why uh, certain uh, people of certain region eat certain uh, type of, type of food uh, for instance why is there difference between uh, uh, south indian and north indian food and why is there a difference between indian and uh, western food and also it it makes a, a comparison with respect to time also sir how the food uh, is changing uh, for instance now with respect to climate change how the food uh, habits can change with respect to people even this can be studied with an anthropology can you name can you take some examples of climate change and uh, change of food habits in the past or present anything Uh, with uh, with uh, due to climate change uh, seasonal variations of rainfall has been uh, impacted due to which uh, uh, high uh, water intensive crops are not being able to grow in diff- uh, different parts of the world so, so we see a slow shift towards uh, pulses and uh, other cereals so red gram uh, lentil and these are the uh, kind of things which uh, people are uh, high eating even in our region jowar uh, is uh, being eaten in uh, larger quantities are you sure you are right yes jowar is gone practice today in telangana sir i am taking uh, i am taking uh, the experience from my uh, my areas because i did not find any jowar shops who used to who give jowar rotis uh, but uh, recently i find one on e every road sir is it because of the climate change they are doing or something else it can be due to uh, better health benefits also sir then there is no question of climate change yes sir climate change is uh, cannot be seen uh, at a small at a small interval sorry it, uh, it's after 2025 as we might uh, notice bigger changes but this is a small phase change sir, because uh, because there is not enough rainfall and irrigation people will uh, generally tend to move towards less water intensive crops sir. and jowar is generally considered as less water intensive crops so it's true right. theoretically what you said is right yes. but practically it is not the thing which happened in telangana it is exactly the reverse how much is how much area is uh, sown uh, jowar is sown today do you know less mm-hmm. now with kaleshwaram project and lot of water available there is a problem to have jowar in the fields or water logged no paddy is the most preferred remain forget about the recent trend people stopped jowar because of many reasons but now jowar has become popular because of the health conditions only because of the diabetes because of because hyderabad is the diabetes capital in india they started taking jowar it's not because in the shift in cultivated cultivation or cultivable practices or cultivation practices because of the climate change it is not true did you get the point you you theoretically your approach is correct but the example is not correct so when when we when you have this problem we will understand that theoretically what you have studies is correct but your pragmatic or your practical understanding about the society is there is some problem or you have to make some changes i right. try to learn more from the society right. did you get the point that's why your concept is correct but it's i i for me it's 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 not the practical aspect driven people into zoar it is not because of the climate change it is because of the diabetes right. Right. 
after now we have lot of water in mahabub nagar also because of kaleshwaram because of many irrigation projects because of mission kaavati and everything when you have lot of water do you think people will go for jawar no sir because of the less productivity of jawar Paid less work. But recently, government has been uh, trying to diversify. Yeah. Crops. Can you tell something about the government's efforts to efforts to diversify the crop pattern? Telangana government. In the recent uh, in the recent notification, uh, you have said that cotton will be try uh, will be given priority or will be promoted. and other than that uh, uh, i don't know any but cotton Actually, is also cotton is also grown in telangana for since ages and cotton is also a problematic crop where lot of suicides are there in cotton field how do you understand this why government is pushing people are asking people are promoting cotton cultivation yes. sir telangana uh, is in the region where black cotton soil is uh, highly available for So strategically, if we grow cotton, hmm. and uh, with the Russia-Ukraine crisis, there is also a, a good market for cotton. So, if we bank on that, uh, it would be good for uh, farmers. But I am not aware of uh, the farmers' suicides in the cotton sector. So, so, so I think it's in the right direction, sir, because because we have good soil conditions and also the temperature, uh, which is near be about 25 degrees. It's also suitable for uh, cotton cultivation. Are you not aware of the su- uh, suicides in cotton sector? Sir, I am aware of farmer suicides in Telangana, uh, sir, but I am not uh, aware of the connection between uh, cotton and cotton farming and uh, things. What are the other other crops which created some panic in the agriculture sector, leading to suicides? Sir, I am not aware of any uh, farming farmer sector, sir. But I can take a guess, uh, thinking that uh, um, low productive crops will uh, generally uh, pose far, pose issues to the farmers, and also uh, the crops which are uh, which are not ex- uh, expected in nature, which it, it can which can fail uh, with sudden rains, and uh, cotton is one of them. Uh, with sudden uh, uh, heavy rains, the total crop will be gone. So such type. Uh, such type of crops can be susceptible to farmers' suicide. Okay. You captain volleyball hostel team twice. Right. Sir. You play volleyball. Right. Sir. Not now, sir. But uh, when I was when I was in college. Right. Sir. IIT. Right. Sir. So just as a hobby. Just. As And as still, as you practice. Right now, I cannot practice. Sir, even if I want to, there are more grounds around my home. Why, why we we are we are poor in such infrastructure, sports infrastructure in this country? So uh, it, it is it can be attributed to the behavioral uh, conditions of the society. So uh, the sports is not given adequate value that it needs uh, even uh, from the childhood, sir, so because uh, the employment conditions are also not so well mm. uh, in the sports sector. So because of that, uh, parents don't find incentives uh, to support children going into the sports sector. This naturally has an effect on lesser grounds uh, in the sp- uh, lesser grounds with respect to sports. Why parents are not opting? It's, uh, because there are no uh, adequate employment opportunities. So even if they get employment opportunities, uh, it, uh, the pay won't be sustainable. So for instance, there are many. Uh, non cricket players who are not able to sustain their own families despite play, uh, playing for uh, state levels district levels so this naturally has an effect on uh, parents is cricket surviving on the at the cost of other games sir i wouldn't say not that. surviving thriving correct word is thriving do you want to say that cricket is thriving at the cost of other games all the other games So I wouldn't say it is thriving at the cost of other games uh, because the demand is high within India uh, because people want to watch cricket. That's why it is thriving. Sir. But uh, it is not like uh, they are taking away space of uh, other sports in, in India uh, by bulldozing other sports. Sir. 
because the demand is there for cricket, uh, uh, that is the reason why cricket is uh, uh, cricket is uh, in, improving uh, day by day. Kabaddi league is also now popular. Right, sir. Because of uh, because of the league, new league that uh, pro Kabaddi league. Uh, because of that, uh, the Kabaddi has been uh, has grown in popularity, sir. So what what do you what what do you understand this phenomena? Making it commercial will make the sport popular. Right, sir. Sir, uh, we need to create a demand. We need to create interest in the people to watch. Uh, uh, sports. Uh, uh, if this means that making it commercial, making the sport commercial, then it has to be so. Uh, then it has to be made commercial, sir. Because only if it's made commercial, uh, it can generate revenue, and with that revenue, it can pay players. And if the players are paid, uh, parents can uh, get incentive to push their children towards sports sector, so they can support their children towards sports sector. For instance, uh, if I take the example of uh, e-gaming, uh, e-sports, so because it's gaining new ground uh, recently in India, parents are able to support some players. Uh, Which sport? E-sports. E -sports. What exactly are e-sports? E-sports are electronic sports, sir, which are played in gadgets like uh, mobile phone or computer. And uh, there are other console, console uh, games. Uh, recently, because of uh, uh, PUBG or BGM, as it is called mm. right now, uh, it has a well uh, well grown ecosystem that uh, supports tournaments and players keep coming into the sports. So, because of this, uh, they are also paid a good salaries. So the tier 1 players who are competing at national and international level, they are paid a good salaries so because of this. They are also able to, uh, the parents are also able to send their uh, children. Uh, stopping their education and sending them towards uh, full-time esports players. This can be emulated in the uh, normal sports also. Uh, bringing more competition into the game by uh, getting more tournaments, uh, bringing more sponsors into the game. This can be done uh, in other sports. Do you think esports is can use esports can be promoted in this country? I think it can be. Uh, it is also being promoted right now. Uh, in the recent budget, uh, government has put up a task force to improve animation and uh, gaming industry in uh, India to make a policy regarding that. And also in the Asian Games that is going to happen in July, uh, esports is a part of it. Sir. For the first time in the history, esports has become part of Asian Games, and uh, all over the world, uh, esports is uh, rising in significance. Sir. Uh, we cannot afford to miss that. Uh, Where the next uh, Asian Games are going to happen? Sir, they are going to happen in China. So, esports, if you are saying that esports is to be promoted, already we are losing our childhood, innocence, physical fitness, and everything to gadget, uh, what you call addiction. Don't you think that esport is going to harm our youth? So not only esports, every anything, any addiction can harm in children. Sir. So it's a duty of parents, and also it's a responsibility of the developers, game developers, to ensure that uh, kids don't play uh, more than adequate number of hours. Sir. For instance, recently, uh, I think the game, the PUBG we are talking about, it has been associated with such problems. It has uh, made sure that it gives uh, a notification after uh, after playing. Let's say one hour, one hour or one and a half hour, so that they can keep a check on it. Sir. So that way they are able to reduce it. It should. So the. Hmm. Sorry. So uh, that way they are able to reduce the impact, sir. But uh, I think it's in the hands of children and the parents to really reduce the problems. Also, we can uh, look at a policy. Uh, where it should not be played at uh, under a certain age, so let's say 12 years, maybe about 10 years, depending on the research or the whatever, uh, collecting the data about how children are playing, how much they are spending uh, in these games. Uh, collect, after collecting the data, we can come at a certain age where uh, children should not be playing uh, games. Do you think it's possible to control? My, my question is, you you talked yes we have to do it all these things are ideals yes. but do you think it is possible to control the addiction 
गैजेट एडिक्शन even uh, because uh, there is an increasing number of gadgets uh, that is the reason why there is sudden uh, interest towards the gadgets sir. but in the west uh, we have seen a gradual reduction in the interest sir. and uh, they have been diversified they have diversified their interest and they found different interests mm. so i think uh, i am guessing that several similar phenomena will happen in our country and uh, eventually uh, <laughs> so we will find a different avenue to spend time, to spend leisure time and the gadget direction will reduce it eventually. Sketching is your hobby. Right. What exactly is sketching for you? Right. Sketching, I used to do sketching when I was a child. Uh, right now I would uh, appropriately call it as a drawing or a um, realistic drawing. As a re hyper realistic drawing. Hyper realistic drawing. Right, sir. Explain. Uh, uh, sir, I would take an image and uh, I would draw uh, exactly uh, how it looks in the image, sir, uh, uh, dot to dot. Uh, it will take some 14 to 15 hours uh, for each drawing, sir. So, to differentiate it from other drawings, uh, it's just that it will be really exceptionally clear that the image is exactly same to same. So that, is, that is not a uh, hyper relation. Sir. Would you like to have some water? Yes, so, hyper realistic drawing means just you are making a copy of the original. Just a copy of the original. Okay? Which fields are where this art is useful? Can you tell me? Sorry, in the forensics, it can be used. Mm. How you use it in forensic? In the forensics, uh, they, used, they usually try to map uh, um, Sorry, if you give me one second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, not, it's my alarm, sir. Oh, oh, that's what I was... <laughs> I asked him to come and check what is this alarm. That's how I am getting. I was trying to search where it is. Not alarm, I think this should be. Then I'm going to get pills in the sound of smoke. Got the anger. You know, I think it's in the flat. I called him to check that sound. I thought this is from this gap. So, they usually use it to construct the face of the accused by by having a person who who gives suggestions on how we should draw the face, we should draw mouth. Again, depending on the structure, they try to create a face out of it. But here, there is no original copy before you. Right, sir. You said you are copying the original. Right, sir. And till the, even the dot, single dot will be completely duplicated or replicated. Right. So that is different from what you do. There, there is no original copy. Only expression are saying that no, no, the cheekbone should be like this and this is, right. this is. Right. So is there, a, I think there is a difference between what you do and the forensic drawing right. is there. Yes. Am I right? Yes. Yes. But I am asking in which sector? This will be useful. Sir, probably our architecture. But like? Not, you know, I have seen architecture students drawing a building uh, in the construction, uh, construction, but not exactly aware of it. Even that can be filmed and it can be done because you have lots of and equipment now. Yes. But in one field, you don't do that. Making replicas, that is museums. Did you hear the point? I'm giving you a clue. Making a replica of a painting. See, if there is any structure or some blueprint of a building, architecture, 
that can be filmed that can be copied you need not have the original because there is no one to ask you whether this is the original or not right sir but in museums for example if i have mona lisa right sir the original will be kept in the racks or under close watch and ward key it will not be open the replicas will be kept if that is a serious uh, it is so precious then this art is useful copying to the dot right. am i right sir so i was thinking that they would put only the original uh, uh, there are there are many museums they will display copies of it in originals will be because they, they don't want to expose it to some atmosphere too only replicas will also be put not i am not talking about mona lisa right. some other things some. okay when when security concerns are there Are replica uh, exhibitions also they put replicas, similar replicas. Okay. Have you watched Da Vinci Code? No. Sir. Read the novel. No. Sir. You have you could have got the clue from that. Anyway, so. Anything. So yes, sir. What does a nation mean to you? The term nation. Right, sir. Nation. Nation is usually associated to cultural concepts. So when uh, people are uh, related by the culture, then they are called uh, a nation. What is the difference between a nation and a state? So, state is usually a political entity uh, which has defined boundaries. Uh, Nation uh, in, within a state, uh, people uh, need not have uh, similar cultural values. What is a nation state? So, nation state is uh, something which uh, whose boundaries are the same, sir. The boundaries of a nation and the boundaries of a state simply means that uh, uh, people within a state are uh, are of the same cultural uh, cultural parts. Sir. What does culture do? What does culture mean? The term, quote unquote. So culture is something uh, that people get after uh, that people do not get inherently from outside. They learn it while living through the lives. What does it sound? It can be anything. Sir. It can be religion. It can be food. <coughs> it can be songs. It can be anything. Non-biological part of a human being can be called as uh, culture. Is India a nation? India is not a nation. India has uh, multiple nations. Like, can you can you elaborate? So, so you you mentioned that India is not a nation. Right. Sir. You stick by that. From the anthropological definition of nation, uh, India is not a nation. Sir. But for the political pers from the political perspective, people usually uh, associate uh, or people usually use nation and state as a Similar terms. Uh, that's why we usually uh, see that uh, outside in the media or press. People call uh, nations. Uh, India is a nation. We can't we say that India is a nation in the making. Nation. I wouldn't really say so, sir. Uh, and I hope it would not be called. A, it wouldn't become one nation in the future. Okay. What is this viewpoint? When you are saying that it wouldn't become one nation in the future, what is the viewpoint or the perspective that you are trying to explain? There is a particular term, right? Right. The ideology which you are carrying. Right. Sir. What is that ideology? Right. Sir. Uh, nation. Uh, India becoming a nation would simply mean that there is a greater uniformity in the nation, and uh, being uh, India being diverse, very extremely diverse. I wouldn't want it to become uniform or. Anthropologically, what is the term? So that uh, I never any term in this. Yeah, we were explaining that right? we should not become uniformity or you know there should be diversity. <coughs> there should not be this single coherent whole. Right. So what is the term anthropology? What do you? What is the term used? I hope you are able to understand what I am asking. I'm not, I'm, I, no. I think you are referring to race, also, but I am not. Is there something known as majoritarian viewpoint? 
okay when you adopt it you are you are referring to a particular term right. when you are respecting diversity it's a particular term right. so just think on those lines fine so what are the major challenging challenges that india is facing four major challenges as a nation from the uh, the one would be uh, from the economic point of view uh, you please talk okay. from the economic point of view the uh, one would be poverty sir. increasing poverty and hunger uh, throughout the nation uh, two would be increasing communal conflicts sir. recently we have seen uh, greater number of communal conflicts within india um, three would be uh, the federalism the constitutional federalism uh, that is envisaged under constitution is not being followed up is being slowly eroded sir. and four would be uh, with respect to elections uh, i think criminalization of politics is is uh, increasing at a rapid pace sir. what was the first one poverty and hunger and the fourth one criminalization of politics before that what did you say federalism right right sir. what is federalism so federalism is uh, something mentioned implicitly in the constitution it is not directly mentioned in the constitution uh, federalism no, in general means I want, I want the meaning of the term federalism right federalism is a division of powers uh, division of power uh, vertical division of power from central to state to local okay. is quasi federal is india quasi federal or federal Sir, I'm, uh, I don't know the exact meaning of quasi federal, sir. But that's what I would call it federal. What is cooperative federalism? Having said that, you said uh, you have mentioned about federalism. That's what I'm asking. What is cooperative federalism? And what is competitive federalism? Right. So, cooperative federalism is something that. Uh, uh, the states and the center work cooperatively towards a, a single goal and uh, comparing it with the competitive federalism it means that uh, there will be competition between states which niti ayog has adopted uh, ranking states uh, in different indicators and then uh, through this competition so that uh, some st uh, lagging states can move forward towards a common goal so this is what uh, who has I given mean, this term which political scientist has given this term of cooperative federalism which should take the case sir i'm not aware of any such thing if it is an indian scientist it could probably be amar the same it's not amar the same sir you're talking about poverty second one is communism Communal, communal conflict. How to reduce this communal? What exactly is the reason for the communal conflict in India? Right, it could be uh, the growing intolerance within the society. Uh, from the anthropological point of view, we can say that whenever there are two distinct groups, uh, there will always be relative uh, disadvantage, or one group will be a relative disadvantage, or the, uh, due to relative poverty. When compared to other groups, this will uh, create alienation within the groups. This could be one of the reasons why there are communal conflicts, and also the growing majoritarianism uh, within the country across the regions. That could be another reason. You said it is growing majoritarianism. Yes. There is another uh, viewpoint saying that it is the minority skepticism, which is reason for this. Communal conflict. What do you say, uh, sir? I would go with the majority. Sir, I wouldn't say there is any skepticism to minority. Why only one particular re religion has the conflict, has the problem when we talk about religion, religious conflict? Why not all the other minority religions? Parses are minorities. Jains are minorities, Sikhs are minorities. Do we have when we talk about my communalism? Right. Do we have other communities also 
or we have only one or two communities in this conflict? There are only two communities. Uh, uh, partially, uh, the communal conflicts between these two parties are increasing because of the historical uh, uh, significance, because uh, the Mughals, uh, the Delhi Sultan, all these people are uh, usually viewed as invaders uh, rather than people who have settled within the country by the majoritarian uh, uh, religion. So this is one of the reasons why uh, people, uh, there is conflict between only these two groups. And other reason could be that because these are two groups which have the highest population within the country. So these could be the two reasons why there is conflict between these two groups. Why not with Christianity? Sir, because uh, they are not in higher, high numbers uh, and also uh, historically Christians are not found uh, in India sir, and there is no greater conflicts. Complete North, North Eastern India is complete Christian. Right, uh, because there have been uh, no invasion or any uh, any different situations as such, so that uh, because there is no historical uh, differences between the two or conflict, uh, historical conflicts or different or conflicting ideas, conflicting ideas. So definitely there is uh, conflicting ideas between Christianity and Hinduism, because Hinduism uh, looks at multiple uh, or. Uh, multiple words and uh, Christianity has only one word. So, definitely the foundational principle is uh, there is conflict or differences between the religions. But because there is no historical differences, because uh, there have been no uh, invasions or any as such, because, uh, there is no conflict. Uh, that's what I think. So, in my Coming back to your nationality question. Yes. What is a nation and what is a nationality? Sir, so nation is a uh, term which which uh, which uh, denotes cultural significance. So it's it's a it's a body. It's a geographic term, and uh, nationality is a symbolic term. So uh, that one a person has its own nationality. It's symbolic to one each individual. Are you sure about this answer? So that's what I mean. India is a country with different nationalities. If I give this statement. Do you support this argument? India is a country having different nationalities. Sir, coming to nationalities, uh, sir, coming from the modern perspective, I think uh, saying that India is a country with different nationalities, it wouldn't be right, sir. But uh, from anthropological speaking, politically speaking, I think India is a country with different nationalities. But practically, I think uh, uh, from the World, uh, world view point of view, I think India is a, India has only one nationality. World view. From the world view, I think India has one nationality. From the theoretical or academic point of view, India has different nationalities because India has different cultures. That is the reason. Why Do you think the world uh, political point of view also India has one nationality? It's because uh, the nations and states are being regarded as one one entity. Um, that is the reason why. Is it anthropological view or political view? Political view. Political view. Nation or nationality or nation state, these concepts are the products of which socio or which economic condition in this world. What created this nation state concept? Can you tell me? Nation state or nation or country? Sir, because of the growing nationalism. Because uh, after the French, uh, after the French nationalist movement, uh, countries started uh, uh, drawing borders around them. That is, from there uh, the concept of nation and uh, state came. Uh, uh, ever since eighteen hundreds, uh, new nations have been uh, propped up all over the world. So I think that's where uh, the concepts of nation and states are. From. You are talking about French Revolution and all those things, but there is one essential aspect. What created a nation state? Feudalism, capitalism, democracy, and what, what is the term you use for which which is which is the reason for the creation of nation state? So nation state can be created by any of the terms that you have mentioned. So you can Feudalism can create a nation state? Our country? 
Sorry. Country. Have you country word is loosely used in history, loosely Ashokan country or something. But did we call it as country? We call it as kingdom or an empire, but not as a country, not as a nation state. Is there any difference between these two periods when you are talking about nation states? This is the product of capitalism. With the emergence of capitalism as an economic system in the world, gradual evolution of nation states started beginning. They need nation states to demarcate the boundaries once again so that they can have their own markets, not at the whims and fancies of the feudal lords. That is where this change has ever occurred. Okay? So, because when you say nation states or nationality, emergence of the nation state concept and the origins that should be understood. Then only you can easily talk about these things. Okay. What is the significance of village studies? Sir, village studies are uh, important to study within India because most of the India lives in villages. Nearly 65% of the India lives in villages. Hence, uh, it is important to understand uh, and it is significant to study villages. Also, the other significance can be that uh, uh, to understand the caste system or the few systems that govern uh, India, we need to understand. Uh, we need to understand through village studies on this. And they have also given theoretical concepts. Uh, oh. Can you name a few anthropologists? So initially, it was uh, the village studies was pioneered by M. N. Srinivas in India through the concepts like Sanskritization, uh, dominant caste. They are the concepts which uh, describe the uh, Indian system. So I think uh, village studies hold a uh, good significance. Any significant anthropologist who has worked on particular villages in Telangana, prominent anthropologist. So there was a person who uh, worked on Kundaretis in Telangana, but I am unable to uh, remember. Uh, it was Führer uh, Hammond also. Um, which was that village? Sir, I'm going to recollect the village. And there was another person who worked on Shamir Pet village. Can you recollect the anthropologist? Sir, it was, in, it was an Indian anthropologist. Sir, but, uh, it could be Sirube or NK Boss, sir. But, uh, Sirube. I don't know who exactly. And you mentioned the right answer, so find out for yourself. So, uh, you know Mr. Mahatma Gandhi. Yes. What is his viewpoint on villages, Indian villages? Sir, his view is that uh, Indian villages are perfect and uh, we should go back to a uh, village system. And uh, villages are self-sustainable. So, hence we should go back to village system is what uh, Mahatma Gandhi says. So what is the differing viewpoint in Gandhiji's and Dr. B. R. Ambedkar's idea on village. So, Dr. Ambedkar, uh, uh, differing from Mahatma Gandhi, says that the caste system and the evils of the caste system uh, grew, grows from the villages. Sir. So, that's why uh, uh, B. R. Ambedkar was against the uh, against the idea of uh, Mahatma Gandhi of creating a village uh, based in the Did you suggest anything? Based on this understanding, did he suggest anything? So I think he suggested democracy out of this. Yeah, about, about, about carving of states or carving of cities. Any any con con any any concrete suggestion he made? You said based on the village. Village is definitely a seat for caste system. So did he suggest anything? Any alternate model? He yeah, suggested village led growth. Right, what did B.R. Ambedkar suggest as an alternative model? Nothing that I am aware of. So, which viewpoint do you subscribe to? Sir, I think it should be a mix of both. Uh, villages can't be uh, left out because most of the Indians live in villages. So, Village led growth uh, as such cannot be uh, our, our goal, sir. It should be a middle path, sir. 
since I am not aware of what we are on with, sir, I cannot uh, really answer the questions. So presently, you see the global order is in a state of flux. Yes. What could be the possible reasons, according to your understanding? The broad possibilities of future world order. Sir. The present world order. Why is it in the present world order? Whatever you are seeing. Why did we arrive at this situation? And what is your understanding? In layman terms, you can Sir, post uh, uh, the split of the USSR, uh, the world has moved towards unipolar world with, uh, with USA at, with the USA at hegemony, hegemonic position. And uh, now we see the growth of uh, What is China. hegemony? Hegemony. Uh, I don't know the exact definition, sir, but I can take a guess. So, hegemony. Can you tell about cultural hegemony? What is cultural hegemony? Sir, again, I am not aware of it. Yeah, but based on your understanding, you can take a guess. Cultural hegemony, uh, I think, is something that uh, a group uh, tries to dominate over, uh, a cultural group tries to dominate over other cultural groups. Forget about explaining hegemony. Tell, us, tell the synonym of hegemony. <coughs> Sir, I am not exactly aware of the term hegemony. Dominance. Dominance. With a slighter, less intensity. Hegemony is a political term. Right. Dominance is a normal term. Right. Is it clear? Right. Yes. Then you explain yes, hegemony. Sir, because uh, it was a unipolar, uh, because the US was at a dominant position, so we can call it a hegemony. Sir, right now what we are seeing is that uh, with the growth of China and uh, other uh, other powers like India, we are uh, seeing a shift from unipolar world to multipolar world. Uh, probably uh, we should see it in the future if the concrete shift would, would happen. But uh, there are uh, we see a general perception that there is a shift from unipolar. World. Do you think that? India's foreign policy should be revamped for this. <coughs> Before that, if you could explain what are the basic premises of Indian foreign policy? Very basic premises. Or the essence of the premises you can just quote. Indian foreign policy, like any other foreign policy, tries to secure uh, the Indian interests. Uh, keeping that in mind, uh, we have taken uh, measures like uh, uh, non alignment, non alignment. In the strategic autonomy and even punch in with, uh, uh, with the China. So, I think these are the foundations of uh, Indian foreign policy. The second part of the question. Uh, so, uh, I don't think uh, India should revamp uh, the foreign policy. Sir. I think it has been doing great. Uh, in, my, in my personal opinion, I think India is one of the most. Uh, India has one of the most pragmatic foreign policies, sir. so I don't think it should uh, be <coughs> also. Also, we have not got any, we have not got into any uh, major adverse situation or into any greater war, and we have been maintaining the our stand of peace, which has been continuing since history, since uh, longer part of history, and since that has been continuing, I don't think we need to uh, revamp our foreign policy. Do you subscribe to India's stand on the present cri crisis between Russia and Ukraine? Yes, sir, I do subscribe to India's stand. What is India's stand on this issue? We do not know, sir. if you could elaborate. Sir, India um, has taken a position of strategic autonomy, securing its own interests with Russia, while also condemning the actions implicitly uh, in. Well, well, condemning Russian actions implicitly in the Ukraine. So, because uh, it can be seen that in the recent UNHRC uh, vote, India abstained uh, when Russia, when uh, there was a voting on uh, removing Russia from the UNHRC, India abstained from the vote instead of supporting uh, uh, Russia. So, we cannot uh, simply say that uh, India is implicitly supporting Russia as such. So, I think uh, India has taken a strategic stand while securing interest and uh, not uh, going at, with any particular party, so either Russia or <coughs> So I think India's stand is uh, justified. Sir. Does India have any specific refugee policy? 
So I know that India has not uh, uh, ratified the uh, Convention on Refugees, but uh, I'm not aware of any specific policy from on uh, refugees. But India has in the past uh, taken in many refugees uh, from Bangladesh, uh, even Rohingya refugees, and even from Pakistan. So even Rohingya refugees, we are uh, accepting. We are not accepting, sir, but. Uh, uh, Humanitarian assistance is being given, so basic necessities of the refugees are being provided at the border. Who are the other refugees we have, uh, you know, welcomed? So during the, 90s, the recent times also there were some refugees. So maybe uh, if you are referring to Sri Lankan uh, Tamils, that's, that's what I'm aware of. So even in 1971, we took in Bangladeshi refugees due to the war. He asked recent. Take recent, the clue. Recently, I think it would be Sri Lankan Tamils. Other than that, I am not aware of. Didn't we had Afghan crisis? Sir, uh, I wouldn't call them refugees, sir. They were already staying in India, uh, in my understanding. So, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Because uh, they were given. Uh, they were not getting visa, uh, the visa time period was extended so that the Afghani people can live within India. But India, Sikh, those who are Afghan national, Sikh people, Sikh communities, right. were they not airlifted? So there was a airlift, sir, but I am not aware of uh, specific people who were airlifted. You know, I understood the issue. Do you subscribe, subscribe to the government's viewpoint where they are taking a differing stance based on the background of the community? You have a different policy for Rohingyas, you have a different policy for Sikhs, you have a different policy for Pakhtuns or Pashtun region of Pakistan. From Baluchistan, you have a different policy. So do you subscribe to the standpoint of India? Sir, so India's uh, Indian government's argument is that uh, these groups have been uh, uh, persecuted within the countries that they were part of. So that's why we are accepting them. Is a stand of Indian government, sir. But I think in being India being a secular country, we, we should uh, adopt a uniform policy throughout the region, uh, across the regions. That is my opinion. What is uniform civil court? Uniform civil court is something that is given in Article 44, sir. It says that. Uh, the personal laws of different religions should be made in a single uh, uniform policy. So, do you see that it will become a reality in the distant future or the near future? Sir, I don't think it is a possibility in the near future. Sir. In the distant future, uh, ideally, uh, I think it has to come. Sir. In the near future, I don't think there is a possibility of it coming. Sir. So, what are the major aspects? That are plaguing Indian governments. Governments per se. So, the major, uh, the most important uh, factor would be the corruption, sir. And also, uh, slow adoption of technology could be other factor which is plaguing the governments. Sir. And uh, there is also a greater, uh, major, uh, wider viewpoint that. Uh, the, uh, the administration is not is not people friendly rather than uh, which are they are heavily focused on the internal process rather than what people actually need. So this perception could be one of the other factors playing the role. Okay, what is the difference between administration and governance? So in my understanding, administration is a body uh, which implements government's policies. Governance is a way, it's a process in which the administration implements policies. So that's what I. So. The last question. It's a long time since we were talking. <coughs> Let's stop with jogging. Right. Your hobby is jogging. Right. Do you think this hobby of jogging? is a continuous one, like painting or these things are there. Jogging is a physical exercise for many. But you say it is jogging is your extracurricular activity and hobby. 
निश्चित है सर इन माय ओपिनियन हॉबी समथिंग वी डू टू रिलीव आवर सेल्फ ऑफ द मेंटल प्रेशर और अदर इश्यूज दैट वी आर गोइंग थ्रू इन दैट सेंस जॉगिंग हैज बीन क्रिटिकल फॉर मी टू गेट बैक इनटू हेल्थ व्हाइल आई वाज प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर दिस एग्जाम सो दैट आई थिंक जॉगिंग कुड बी जस्टिफाइड एज अ हॉबी टू दिस एनी फिल्म्स एंड जॉगिंग नॉट अवेयर ऑफ एनी फिल्म्स बट आई थिंक बाहर फिल्म का वर्क I don't think it is jogging as such. It is not jogging. It is running only. Okay. Sir, I don't know any film on jogging. Jaguar's Park. Okay, it's it's a hobbit film. <coughs> There is a park in Bombay known as Jaguar's Park only. Forest Gump. Forest Gump. Any film based on Forest Gump is being produced in India. Right. So there is a movie coming in twenty twenty two. Mm. Who is the hero? I think Amir Khan. Yeah. I don't know the name of the movie. Not Chadda. I don't know. Okay. That is based on this. Okay. You you mentioned Faris Jam. Exactly. Faris Jam. I had the Faris Jam in mind, but still waiting. Anyway, good. <coughs> We had a decent, long interaction. Tell me, what's your understanding about your performance in this interaction? You can give a thought also. You can take a few seconds also. It need not be instant answer. Yeah, have water and just review your performance. Sir, I think I was being honest in most of the answers, but in the structuring part, I was not able to structure the answers properly. Is that is what they mean? Because while I was thinking, I'm uh, recollecting thoughts, but I'm not able to uh, put it properly in a in a good way. Is what I think. Hmm. And what else in the attitude? In the last mock interview, people, uh, panel said that I was too casual. Really, they said it. Yes. That showed up on you today. <laughs> you are nervous at times. I felt it. A bit nervous, or not so. Or you can be casual, but not uh, like this. A bit nervous. And uh, what you call tightrope walking at times. Don't try to do tightrope walking. If you start doing tightrope walking, at some point of time, you will tumble down. At times, you are very honest, as you said. Some critical questions like communalism, you are very honest. I appreciate it. Then you never did tightrope walking. Then you were very very. Honest and you were very casual, and you, your answers were firm. That's what is needed. Okay. So I should move away from diplomatic. Yeah, you see, being casual is different, and being honest is different. Okay. It is related to the question. Ah. Huh. Whether you are being diplomatic or moderate, certain questions are asked so that you express your opinion. So you should be clear, you know, clear about your opinion instead of being. And some questions like our our initial discussion itself with the home worker started there. Though you never had, or you might not have the intention to lessen the importance of women in household work. Your your conversation was the words you have chosen were. Pushing me to understand that you have a different opinion, like helping, adding, wear and tear. See, so when I ask you, do you think I will allow you to? I will give you the. I will uh, give the right to speak. Then you understood the exactly some in inherent or inner underlying aspect is there where rights you cannot give rights. Rights are inherent. 
we have the right. A woman has the right. A man cannot give the right. If a man thinks that he will give the rights to women, that is wrong. That was not my intention. Yeah, I know. But when you started as saying that home worker and you were talking, for a few seconds, for a few sentences, I had that impression. Okay. So, such things should be avoided. You know that a housewife and home worker are homemaker. I was not able to give the terms. Ah, just, uh, give a term. Yeah, yeah. That is where you fumbled actually. That uh, that uh, homemaker wo uh, word you just couldn't get immediately. I then the problem has begun. When you are trying to explain again, you may, you you have taken many words which are not appropriate. Okay. Then uranium question also. Anything should be people centric. You started people centric only. Very good. First, you said the local people will be affected, but you took an R and R policy. More than R and R policy, it is a question of survival of the tribes because of the pollution, because of the radiation. Not just the tribes, the entire region, starting from this Nalamala region up to the coast where the Krishna, go, Krishna river merges the ocean. So, this is people's health is the first affected, not R&R. If you start talking about R&R for every question, R&R will be the first priority. Uranium question is not R&R. First thing is health impact. Sir, I said that in the short term it should not be, in the long term it can be. But whatever it is. R&R should come later. First thing is this one. You asked a question on whether uranium should, be mined, should not be mined forever. So how should we, should, should I say that it should not be mined forever? If I am there, I will take my stand. See, for many questions, you see, some questions you can be diplomatic, but some questions you can have your opinion. See that? My personal opinion is this, you can tell. If you have your personal opinion on uranium mining, you will be disqualified as a bureaucrat. I don't think so. Okay. Uh, because if that is the case, you have to, to completely take the list of the government activities and just to stick and buy heart it and you have to say that this is my opinion. For uranium mining, you can have your opinion. <clears throat> there are many bureaucrats who fought against uranium mining. Sharma, UA Sharma Sama who is there in Vishak Vishakhapatnam. He is a fighter for all these causes. Why is that? Against all these things, against all the evils. Sharma is there. The bureaucrat, he did. So like that we can. So you can have your opinion. Yes. Okay. So other thing is Jawar. <coughs> Sir, I thought correlation... Oh, it's very important. When we are asked about Climate change and pattern change because you are talking about anthropological changes. Right. Then Jawar definitely because lack of water you will have Jawar. But our example of Telangana will not suit here. Right. No water we were growing Jawar. But now we need Jawar rotis because we are diabetic. It is not because of climate change we are adopted to Jawar rotis. <laughs> it is because of diabetes. Right. That even this Jawar roti is not the real Jawar roti. It will be this thick. And the Jawar, this present Jawar rotis you get in market is zero size Jawar rotis. Am I right? It is very thin. But uh, you go to your Nagarkarnul native place. What is what is the size or what is the thickness of the Jawar roti in the rural areas? I wouldn't say it is thicker. It is thicker, thicker than, than what you get in the market. That is the real Jawar roti. Here it is because of diabetes we have got these Jawar rotis, very thick one, a very thin one and zero size, I call them as zero size Jawar rotis. Okay. So your answer, generalization is correct, but the answer is wrong. Okay. Where people will think that you have studied theory, but practical application, you are not aware of it. Okay. So these are the basic things which sometimes I have discussed when I was asking the question itself, like sketching.
Right. You are giving something answer which is not related with what you are talking about. Forensic. Yeah, forensic. Dot sketching is not forensic one. That is again imaginative. Sir, and it is not, uh, what I do is not dot sketching, sir, it's lines only. Ah, dot means to the dot, the complete exactly. sketching, exact. There you don't have the reference point. Yes, sir, but your right. practice is you have a reference point. Right, sir, yes, sir. That is imaginative. Right, I'll be telling that his nose is straight, then he wears specs, then yes, you'll be painting. Right. But here we are having a original copy. Right, sir, yes. So the answers are the examples you are taking. For the explanation, there is some gap. I told you because that is the only thing I know where <laughs> people draw faces or yeah, yeah. portraits. Okay. So I took that. Should I not take the, any example? That no, you should try. No, no, you can take example. But you can say I don't know examples where it is used. Right. But what you do is, it's a clear thing. You have the original before you right. and you will replicate it. That's it. Right. You, you use the word super? Hyper, uh, hyper? Hyper realistic. Hyper realistic drawing. Yes, sir. I could have asked some more things if you go into, but I thought, what do you mean by realistic drawing? Realistic drawing is because it's an actual copy of a replica of what is there. Need, right not be. need not be. Realistic drawing can be anything which you see it, need not be a copy. I draw this, that is a realistic drawing. Yes, sir, because you are drawing exactly. Ah, that, that's need not, you need not say about copy there. Okay. Did you get in mind? I will give you a, some, uh, some material and uh, both, you will draw this. This is realistic. Yes. What do you mean by surrealistic? Sir, uh, I don't know the literary meaning of surrealistic. Uh, uh, guess. Surreal is beyond real. Yeah, beyond real. Something which is not realistic. Yeah. Or let's say caricature drawing. Could be More than caricature. Have you gone through, have you heard about Salvador Dali? You just Google Salvador Dali, surrealism. That's surrealist paintings. You will see what exactly is surrealism. Beyond realism. Okay. When you have such names uh, when you uh, ask uh, when you tell some names like uh, when you take some words like hyper realistic right. then you will be forcing me right. to go to some other question yes, okay yes, yeah. these are the things which I found during this conversation right. okay need not be nervous be, okay. be cool I was not nervous internally but I don't ah. know if I was appearing like ah. just Energy level should be shown on the face also. Okay. Some more. Thanks. Okay. You never laughed? Sir. In the entire conversation? I don't sir. I was trying to be strict talking. <laughs> your, your lips were completely staggered. You have a wonderful smile. Huh? You can reflect that. Yeah. Okay. So, because I think that it will be too informal. Uh, no, no, no. A slight smile and a laugh is different. A slight smile where you are reflecting with positivity mm. and where you are ref reflecting a comfort zone. Mm. The whole process, it seemed like a stress interview. Okay. okay. That is what was reflected. Okay. Your uh, body language or your facial expression reflected as if this was a stress interview. Okay. Your BSC interview is going to be one of its kind. It is going to be very amicable. You will be in a very comfort environment, hospitable. Mm -hmm. So you have to also see that at the same time maintaining that level of professionalism, you should reflect that vibe wherein you are ready to take what the board is giving you and mm -hmm. giving them the apt answers. So that is what you just try to work out on. It just takes you one or two days of practice to get over it. You are thinking too much into your head, in your head I think. I so used one word, tightrope walking. Yeah. So stay in the comfort zone, like so you how we are discussing comfort zone, but at the same time maintaining the basic etiquette of being sturdy, maintaining maintaining the right body posture, maintaining the right eye contact. These yes. things you maintain, but the reflection should be that you are in your comfort zone and you are confident. No matter what questions they ask, you are ready to answer them to the best of your knowledge. 
you do not know, you will say that, sir, sorry, sir, I do not know about it. Simple as that. That is what it is about testing the personality. Even if you do not know information, they will, you know, forego. They will not bother about it. But this comfort zone should reflect. Now, now how you are uh, sitting in a very sturdy position at the same time, the facial expression, your body language is very comfortable. Even for the person sitting on the other end to see. This you work on. That, I think that is what sir was referring to all this while. I was, I was waiting to see that smile. <laughs> but I wanted to point out because I thought I don't know whether you have attended or Problem any suggestion like came. Coming from uh, IIT, he must have attended some corporate interviews. So there, there are usually the stress interviews, especially mm -hmm. these people from IIT, they are put to stress interviews. Mm -hmm. Most of them. So I think he is carrying the same uh, legacy over here. Here it is about your personality, it is not an interview. Sure. So reflect that personality. There is an interview in three years. Do you remember that? Yes, sir. What is that? Who is that person? Who is that man? Raju. Ah, Raju. Raju's interview. How is it? In that you need not be too honest like that. That is a different thing. But at least that is the personality. He reflected his personality and he forced the board to choose. Okay, yeah. I will keep my attitude to you. You keep your attitude to Just he was moving away. It doesn't mean that you you be very very casual. You have your composure. Uh, That's a natural instinct you have. You you are composed. You have the stability of thought. You know stability of uh, body language. Just reflect that positive vibe. That simple you know vibe. You know when you enter the room, they should get the, get the feel that you are comfortable, and they will, they should also come into the comfort room. That you work for. Basically, this is a conversation. Yeah, this is a conversation. Like this only you should do feel. Whatever you are discussing now, this is the after way of a healthy interview. That will give you better marks in UPS. <coughs> Make it slightly friendly. Yeah. Sure. Be natural. Okay. Need not be there. That don't do tightrope walking. I don't know whether what some other people suggested. But I don't think, for me, personality test is a different one. Not testing your your, your knowledge or everything. If you have told about Nalamala wrong facts also, I don't mind. You have mentioned perfectly. But your reaction is what? Uh, how you are reacting? Uh, trying to take a middle path in development and the environment. No, no, that, that is again content part. I am not talking about contents part. I am talking about your attitude towards the question. Okay. I, your opinion may differ from my opinion. I can differ, I may differ with your opinion in any, many aspects. It is not going to hamper the prospects of a candidate. This personality, this is the personality test. Your complete personality should be unveiled here. Okay. Any other thing that you so, want to ask? Yes, sir. Uh, while answering your question uh, to you, sir, should I look at both the panels? Yeah, see, primarily you should focus on the person who's asking, okay. not the member who's asking. But if it is an elaborate question, you can just pan across, very slight panning to the other board members also. So only while cross questioning or even while, let's say, when you are answering, you'll obviously if there is something that you are elaborating, you can just give them because they are also sitting and gives a positive uh, It's feeling. involving them also. them also. But the primary focus is the member who is asking. Right. Other members, very slightly, you can just... How you are doing, I think that is apt. Like what you are doing is sure. You are already seeing the other members also. So because there was cross question, you, the sir picked some questions that you also asked. Yeah, in spite of that, you were trying to make a slight eye contact with me also when I was asking. That thing you can do in the main interview also. There will be four or five members. So, slight planning. See, don't think too much about the body, about the attitude. Be cool, casual.
He has all the attitude. Ah, he doesn't need to worry about it. I think, I think the last interview might have changed his perception sure. about it. Yes sir, they told me that I was too casual and I need to be stricter. Uh, that's okay. the, I don't think that is a correct approach to any interview. Interview is something you go with an uninhibited mind. You should not have any inhibitions. If you have these inhibitions in your mind, they will play on your answers. And that is going to ruin your chances of getting above 185. Yes. So be clutter free in your head and just try to focus on whatever you are trying to articulate. Yes. The clarity of thought and brevity of expression should be reflected in what you are speaking, in your body language. Yes. This is what is an interview, if I will not come. Yeah, I was friendly, that's why. Though I had a difference with you, in the first question itself, I stopped there. Okay, we'll talk it later. Then I came to your comfort zone and asked him. Didn't I? At the end of it, now I am explaining what exactly is a homemaker. Huh? So, two things. One is what we intend to or what we think is different and what the expression is giving is different. Okay. Be casual. Be cool. Don't. Be I, 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 I feel my, my understanding is don't do tightrope walking. Yes. That's the problem. Because even if you do that, there are people who will understand it. Their experiences, you know, whatever is our age, is their experience in bureaucracy. So if you're hiding something, you're with an inhibited or that kind of strictness yes. that you're reflecting, they'll see they think that you're not opening up yes. and you're yes. you're uh, reflecting a false personality which is not yourself. Yes. They can understand that. And there are also people who are acquainted with psychology, some aspects of psychology. Sometimes in the board, some members could be acquainted with that. So they have their uh, viewpoints on that. You know why why board why the board is very very intelligent? Do you know? They don't do type two walking. Here they we are not testing their wisdom. So this board can do think very very freely. When you when you do think freely, the judgment will be better. In fact, trust me, UPSC board, whichever you are going to attend, it will be much more hospitable, mm. much more friendly, much more easier than what was this. Okay. This is all. This is not even a mock interview. It is only an you know DF based session where what based on the questions that you you are answering, what are the link questions which could be asked. So this was just a simulation of that. A mock interview is something there will be about four or five members, okay. and UPSC board will be very comfortable. So you play to your comfort zone and, and you have everything it takes to make it to the service. Have that confidence. Just try to work on these basic nuances. You will scrape through. Even your first attempt success will help you. Right. Do you know that? You will never think that this is the first attempt. Anyway, I got it. Okay. People are coming with so many attempts. This is an advantage you have got. Yes, in the first attempt is, in the first attempt itself, you went up to interview. Make use as advantage. Yeah, okay. I will not no, no, generally I am saying. Yes. So people have different concepts, even first attempt. So you may not or you may not have this because people come up with a lot of experience. Right. Don't ever think about it. Be yourself. Right. That's it. Okay. So also was I fumbling a lot or was my language no, no, fine? No, no, no. Right. It's not a big issue. It happens when you don't have the clarity. Oh. If you have the clarity, you will not fumble. Yes. Clarity, clarity, lack of clarity will be because of two reasons. One is you don't know exactly what exactly what you have to talk. Or second thing, while pushing the words from your mouth, you immediately start doing tightrope walking. Okay, then you'll just snatch the word and take back. Then push something else. Uh, how better would have I would have handled the first question, for instance, homemaker question? No, I was not able to get the word. So. You, yes, yes. No, you can see uh, home that word you couldn't get. Yes. But when I asked house worker, then sir, you said. I, yes, sir. I, you know, in my mind, I was thinking that why it was it is not a right word, uh. <laughs> but. I was not getting any other word in my mind, so I just uh, yeah. said it out. So how, having said that, I have said it in the interview, so how, 
Uh, her, her work is at home. You will not say that while explaining again, you went into wrong track, saying that wear and tear, and you went into the concept of machine depreciation, and it's a long. Actually, you skidding, you know, you skid, and went up to that extent. Then I asked, do you think all these wear and tear concepts work for men also? Then he said no. <laughs> because because the first word there you could you could have said uh, I mean to say that she she is not working outside but she work at home that's it then we, I will not have any other question so because there is a common uh, argument that because they don't contribute directly through to the monetary economy so that's why I try to say that even though it's just a invisible uh, contribution. That again, explanatory part. See, now the advanced concept is a woman's work should be counted. Recently, the survey says 235 minutes every woman gives per household, household work, loving and caring. A man gives 25 minutes in a day. Yes. Have you gone uh, read that article, recent survey? Yes, sir. Yeah. Then, now we have to judge. You see, even words can speak something. Means the, the, the exact meaning will be different. So you have to choose words which are not wrong. Once we choose some wrong word, again going to explain or justify things, again you do a mistake. And finally you wanted to explain in terms of economy, machine, depreciation, which will not be appreciated. Okay? This video is brought to you by AKSIAS.